Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Way T. Lightheart from Bioptimizers with another edition of the Awesome Health Podcast. And boy, oh boy, you are going to love this today because we are talking everything about skin with Danny Neifert. Now, before we get into the four pillars of optimal skin health, the baseline protocols everyone needs to know and do, we're going to talk about some outdated skincare practices, what the new functional medicine model is, and Danny is going to blow our minds about some of the dark arts that are out there and what you can do to avoid getting caught in their web of deceit. Danny is a licensed esthetician with over 20 years of experience with natural product formulation, as well as hands-on individual treatments with clients. She is a clean beauty advocate and speaker, author of Relearning Skin Care, The Story of Skin and the New Way, who loves to bring skin health back down to earth through story and practicality. Miss Neifert practices in both Boulder, Colorado and just up the road in Santa Barbara, California, where she beautifies skin and spends as much time as possible surrounded by nature. Sounds like a good life. She is the mother of two adventurous adults and is a chocolate, yay, and bubble bath lover. Danny, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. I, I love the dark art spin that you already are savvy too. <laughs> well, it that. turns out a funny story for, for our listeners. So this is really, and, and this is, this is doubly funny because it's also my own ignorance. Um, I have a, a, one of my best buddies of all time was in biomedical skincare 20 years ago. Wow. And he was all in and doing the things or whatever. And, and then he got into it. And then he he got, as we got more and more educated, he moved away from that into more holistic skincare. But he used to do all this stuff with this gun. And I, you know, he kind of a little like your little metro there, brother, you know, you're a little <laughs> off, right? And, and um, over the Christmas holidays, and he's all about the skin. And now he does all, he was first on the medical side. Then he went to the natural. He knows all. Like, yeah. Very knowledgeable. And I'm going up there at Christmas time and I'm looking at him, right? We're hanging out and I'm like, God, your skin looks good, dude. It's like, I'm like, getting all these wrinkles and stuff and he doesn't have any. And I'm like, maybe all that stuff for 20 years actually worked. So I thought, well, we better get some experts in here to talk about skin. So thanks for joining us today, Danny. Absolutely. Uh, so let's just get a little bit of background. What got you into skin? Why is it so important? And maybe what are some no-nos that people are kind of conditioned to just think that that's what you're supposed to do with your skin? Right. Well, I got started pretty young, um, really young in my early 20s. I, ha I was a really young mother and gave my daughter a bath, like right when I took her home from the hospital and became like somewhat intrigued, like, well, what do I do for this baby's skin, you know? And so I remember putting something on her called Baby Magic from Kmart, and it was pink, and it smelled like melted plastic, and it was like just horrible. And even I had the good sense even that many years ago to take, I gave her another bath and I actually took it off. And I just, I some, I'd never really thought about skin before. And of course, when you become a parent, it's this huge responsibility. And so I think that was, I did some gardening early on in my life too. I was surrounded by a lot of um, people that gardened and thought holistic. And so all of that stuff started flooding back to me, <laughs> luckily as a young parent. And it set me on this whole path of just like wanting to understand and just loving skin. It's just so beautiful. And um, it, of course, is a whole rabbit hole to go down. I mean, <laughs> the skin hair, the skin care industry is enormous. I mean, it's an ocean of information and products and services that, you know, <sighs> I've spent 20 plus years in now and it's been um so many twists and turns and journeys and thousands of dollars that I spent <laughs> in on my education and on equipment and procedures and um all of the formulations out there like I've just been curious I've been like 
just so curious about skin and it's taken me to some difficult places because I came to some dead ends several times in my career and it I just felt lost several times like what's really happening what's going on why am I spending all this time and money like there was just so so much in that and what finally emerged about well I get the I think it was streamlined about oh maybe somewhere around 12 years ago it started to really firm up and become streamlined and it's this um hybrid of medical skincare and natural skincare that I practice now right now that's that's really interesting because I think um you know traditionally there's been two camps the medical skincare industry which is you know everything from you know cortical steroid like steroidal based creams to you know, injections and fillers and surgeries. I had a, I had a, <laughs> I remember I had a, I had this crazy hairdresser. He's a really good friend of mine <laughs> and he's in the uh, cosmetic industry. He's a very avant-garde hairstylist, you know, come to work in a kilt and chains and purple hair and everything. Oh, I love it. And, and he was talking about when he was getting his face done because he wanted to look young again. He was, he was getting up there and, um, he says, yeah. I said, well, how, well, what do you do when you get done? He's like, yeah, I want to look like I'm doing 60 miles an hour down the highway. And he goes, like <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and of course, being around Venice here, we see some of those people are walking down the street. at Absolutely. Miles yeah, it's a big part of California so, culture. for sure. And then, and then there's the natural people, which like, don't put anything on your skin unless you can eat it. Da, 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 da. You don't right, eat it, right, right. So you got that side. But now there's this emergence of kind of the middle ground extracting the best from both sides. So where is it? Where yeah, are I'm so thrilled. Are... I can tell you've like read my book a little bit, or at least you read the contents. Like I'm, I'm so thrilled. So yeah, I mean, the summary is that, the quick summary is that uh, medical skincare that's being practiced probably I think since the 1930s is all trauma-based and if you want to heal your skin there's this old belief that you harm to heal it was discovered that if the epidermal layer was completely melted off through a chemical peel that the dermal layer will replace it and that set the precedence for every anti-aging procedure that came to follow so we'll just Everything. burn your face off with chemicals and start yeah. over again that's really Isn't what that people wild are and and the upside i will have to say the one upside to that is that that top layer the epidermal layer does get replaced i mean that's the good news and mm -hmm. that's what defines clinical and medical skincare is that it's resurfacing it's right. increasing skin cell turnover so that we really truly can replace more often that utmost layer of our skin because that's the layer that can hold more water it looks fresh it's like it's like keeping the lampshade fresh uh, on the lamp like the right. the light bulb would be our dermis and the lampshade would be our epidermis and so if that lampshade is fresh and has been replaced more often it's gonna help that glow emit better um so, so that, that's why everybody wants new skin cells just right. so you know and for people who don't know you know your blood will be 7.35 ph but your skin will be slightly acidic because that increases the turnover and then they, they just said well what if we make it really acidic and peel it well our acid one? mantle is acidic because it's our first defense in our immune system it's acidic mm -hmm. so that it kills bacteria mm -hmm. so the first line of defense is our skin <laughs> and if it's so slightly it, acidic yeah we would be we would be on dead and with that little acidic um temperature that's there it kills bacteria and viruses so keeping that acid mantle and we can go back to that later is super important and of course all of medical and clinical skincare is all based on destroying that and melting that and this old approach of harming to heal and so yes we do get new skin cells but what we have discovered and something that i've seen firsthand um, through my own practice over many years is that when skin is constantly being scrubbed and melted and lasered and zapped this harm to heal approach it tragically ages at a faster rate and so 
You're, so, you're creating scar tissue, essentially, right? Well, it's not so much scar tissue. It's it's that the dermal layer is the causal mother layer, and that, that's what makes the epidermis. And so when that dermal layer is always given work orders, like replace, replace, work, 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 without the means to support that output, it thins at a faster rate. So dermal thinning is what happens when our skin is over-exercised. I got a question for it just as a guy yeah. that doesn't know anything about this stuff. And that is, I've always thought about this and I just, I was talking to a friend of mine who's, who's another kind of ignorant dude. And um, he grew his beard out for a year and put all this beard oil on it and everything. And then when eventually he shaved it off, his, we were like, God, your skin looks good. He goes, yeah, he says, I think the, the shaving for all these years was actually ripping up my skin. He says, when, exactly I right. this, when I grew this beard out and put all this oil in, he says, and, and then I, when I did shave it off, I was like, who is this guy? Because he said, yeah. my tissues did heal. Is that, is that true? It's true. Like, There's something to that. There's it, It's called the caveman or the cave girl method. You can Google it. <laughs> and it's basically doing nothing for your skin. And the reason it works for a lot of people is because all of the cleansers and all of the moisturizers and even natural products that have too many um, astringent essential oils in it, they're all disrupting. They're mm -hmm. all so disrupting. And there's this american um obsession with cleanliness yes. that people are just wanting to cleanse and cleanse and cleanse their skin and so afraid of clogging their pores and so afraid uh, that that's what's causing the congestion that this over cleansing dehydrates our skin and then therefore causes congestion from the inside out nobody has acne or congested skin because their skin is actually dirty i mean good clean soil is actually not a problem for even gardeners that are in soil like that's not a problem I go out every day and just wipe some dirt on my face <laughs> yes <laughs> just, that would be better than you know what in all truth that would be better for your skin than so many products that are being sold on the market today yeah. um yeah we're, we're, we're gonna identify skin uh skin products that are better than dirt <laughs> okay yeah. we're gonna, let's we're gonna do that more really low and then move up from there <laughs> right yeah and i mean it's it's that's a really great story about your friend with the beard because that speaks to how bad clinical skincare is for our skin <laughs> that so how actually do doing that? nothing is better isn't like so okay so my question comes up now because i'm really having fun here if it's like i walk into a cv cvs yeah. yeah i'm from canada so up there it's shoppers drug mart or london drugs here it's cvs or something <laughs> like that and i go down like I see that those kind of glazy, bright, chemical infused first couple of aisles in the store, which is all beauty care that yeah. I never go down. Good. Like, I just Good. look down there and it's kind of like Neo in the Matrix when they say, hey, don't go down that aisle. <laughs> yeah. oh, I mean, you know what's down there. All of your, you're like, red alert, red alert, yeah, red like alert. All, all my indicators in my body, because it says, don't danger don't danger well i think that you have a very intact intuition and a lot of that is um packaging because you're you're looking a lot of the the actual colors are concealed in the packaging it's this yeah it's it's just this sea of like unending promises and neon colors and bright lights to because the the industry can be so profitable mm -hmm. that everybody wants in on it. Everybody wants in. Yeah. Right, because you can make a bottle of three dollars this and sell it for twenty five or thirty or 40. yeah, exactly. And that's and more. And that's what exactly what um, skincare companies traditionally have been doing for a really long time. And now consumers have become educated and more educated and we're asking for naturals and there we're forcing them the same way that us as consumers force the organic 
a company, all the organic companies and all the, you know, all the groceries, we forced that. Not because, you know, all of a sudden Walmart was being nice and decided to, you know, let's sell organic milk. No, we vote with our dollars and yes. consume. That's why I love to do podcasts and why I wrote my book, because the only thing that's going to change, like how diabolical and sinister this market is, is an empowered consumer that can look at ingredients and make decisions and make choices about what they're putting on their skin. Yeah. I always say if it says poly, poly sorbet, what the heck of it, heck of late, you know what, you probably shouldn't put it on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, sometimes you just have Google the, you know, the, the web is amazing because now we can get on and we can type ingredients into the search bar and find out exactly what that is. Sometimes it's just the fancy word for um, olive oil and people don't you know know the botanical names and sometimes right. it's uh, you know it's absolutely not it's parabens it's synthetics it's preservatives it's all the things and the beauty industry and especially the skin industry has not been regulated like very very little I mean if you were get on and look it's like criminal how little regulation the skincare companies have had to adhere to and it's quite shocking it's i, I just had a guy on the suntan uh that works the sunblock industry and uh he's a company it was on a podcast recently from third rock from the sun and he was saying the same thing like it's like almost every single sun tanning company in the world is using these chemical agents that aren't really good for you. So he, he was a en chemical engineer and figured out, well, how could he build something that wasn't, it wasn't gonna that you, wasn't going to mess yeah, you it's, up. Cause... It's so refreshing. And, and a lot has happened over the last few years. And it, especially with sunscreens, there used to be hardly any clean choices and now, and now there are, and that's just absolutely fantastic because another thing that happens in the skin industry, because it's, can be profitable is they figure out the one thing that they know will sell and then they just keep selling it mm -hmm. over and over and over just robotically because obviously for yeah. a lot of people it's just business and numbers and profit but when you come across somebody like me and some of the, our grass grown women who have been like I've been rolling in essences from, you know, from all these different herbs and plants and all these different things like for so long that it's a completely different way of creating a skincare line. And of course, trying to do marketing in this like crazy sea. I mean, my Instagram account, I try to post every day, but it's a whole, it's a whole different thing because now we have responsibility, number one, for packaging because packaging is so disgusting <laughs> in America. Everything is, oh, it's like, it's just horrible. Um, and, and the beauty industry is no exception. And in fact, so, so bad because everything is single use. Everything is plastics, all the dyes that are used. Like, it's so ugly. I actually made a little video about how ugly the beauty industry is, you know, from packaging. And then of course, it's all the chemicals and the shelf time, then, you know, how companies are protecting all of their profits. So when it comes to, I mean, my whole journey has been this, I just, I never thought I would ever have my own skincare line. I, I never even knew that I would work hands-on with people. It was like this love that just snowballed over the years. And as I tried to solve problems for myself and my family, and of course my clients, like it just, this whole other thing happened. And that, then, then I would love to talk about that at some point. Yeah. So let's uh, quickly go from what are maybe the biggest things that you want to avoid first uh, in skin care that's kind of common in the in the skin yeah and it, this is a lot this is, yeah i'm gonna open my mouth and say some big things right now <laughs> in my opinion all anti-aging and acne products should be avoided okay there you go <laughs> straight like up 90 percent of what's available for consumers anti-aging acne into the trash <laughs> yeah yeah i mean they're all acne products are all astringent Mm -hmm. And they're all going to dehydrate our skin, which is the biggest contributor to congested skin, congested and hydration, hydrated skin. Like they're the same thing. If the skin is 
dehydrated, it's going to get congested because it literally is like cement. Our skin is supposed to be soft and permeable and it's a release organ. So it's supposed to have a whitehead now and again. If you have never had, if you haven't had a whitehead in years, I mean, it's probably because your skin is chronically dehydrated. So our skin needs to be bouncy and soft and permeable and has to have water in it. And so all acne products are built on this single, well, several strategies. Number one, dehydration, because the only ever previous strategy with acne was just to dry it out. We have Mm -hmm. to dry it out. We have to dry it out. So what happens is that skin gets super dried out. It fails to function as skin and all of the congestion just gets built up and stuck, constipated, if you will, underneath. Right. And so that's why acne products are... Um, are not a good idea because if you don't even have acne and you start using acne products, you get will acne. eventually get acne. <laughs> Maybe not full blown, but it will throw your skin so out of balance that it's just a dead end. What else? And then that with the anti-aging products, the what sums up every anti-aging product on the market is that it's all acid-based. It either has glycolic, lactic, or salicylic acid in it, which are all dissolvents or AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids. The old strategy of anti-aging our skin is to exfoliate it. Exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate. It's like the answer to everything. And if an ex- if an exfoliant that is chemical, it literally like dissolves the upper layer of our skin cells, micro, you know, little, little things, mm-hmm. but it adds up. And so then our dermal layer gets that work order, make new skin cells, make new skin cells, make new skin cells. And we have a whole beauty culture that's obsessed with exfoliating our skin. And I know because I was on that hamster wheel at some point, like I, I started natural and I was trained. I went to aesthetic school in my twenties and learned how to peel and burn and zap everyone's skin and followed that. I like that peel, burn and zap. (laughs) Yeah. And followed it to where, to the dead end of like, I'm just going in circles and I don't think it's a, And we're going down in circles. Like if there was a spiraling down, I never saw an increase of skin health. So those two things, those, the anti-aging and the acne products are, um, they're not okay. And we finally have another way. So what, is there any other uh, things to avoid uh, when it comes to your skin? Well, benzoyl peroxide, I didn't mention that one. That's another astringent. Um, tea, tree, lav- um, tea tree and lavender oil. Most essential oils are too astringent to be using on our facial skin. Our body can take a little bit more. But if you look at any kind of natural skincare products, they've basically just put a lot of citrus in it and tea tree and lavender and astringents. So where now they're saying it's natural, but just because it's natural, it doesn't mean that it, I mean, not eucalyptus oil, peppermint. I mean, some of those really potent essential oils, they might be natural, but don't think that they're um, sissy in any way and can't do any harm. And right. they like smell Berkeley's so natural. good. They smell Berkeley. so good that consumers yes. are just buying all these, you know, all of these like, you know, floral bouquets and they're better off using essential oils and a personal scented oil and for cleaning and in some massage oils but for our skin it's just not a good idea got it okay um any other things and then we'll get on to some good stuff well i want to talk about the good stuff okay so great let's get into, <laughs> let's get into maybe maybe you can just tell some of the good stuff and maybe share a client story or two that kind of still oh, so always love stories. those stories because they go that's just like me <laughs> yeah well the cool thing is um about 15 years ago a medical doctor invented something called dermal nutrients and this medical doctor used to be on the treadmill of selling um medical spas and lasers for skin so he was all about lasers and went through a period of um, reorganization, if you will, reassessment. And he, what he did is he took the bioavailable form of vitamin A and wrapped it in a 
in a very special liposome so that it is deliverable and absorbable. It's a PC liposome, phospholipid-choline, and it's something that we use for brain function. So it's not anything mm. weird. It's from lecithin granules. It's a lot of companies are using it. People have been using it in transdermal patches for years. So now we have this nutrient that is like a calorie for the skin, if you will, and it's encapsulated with this liposomal, um, this PC liposome surrounding it. We apply it topically, it drops through the epidermal layer, is released and recognized by our dermal layer as like food, pizza, a burrito, you wow. know, something that the skin can actually use to make new skin cells. So instead of creating new skin cells from a place of trauma and anxiety for the skin, now we can feed it in this really beautiful and profound way topically, fairly affordably, and get the skin making new skin cells so that we can resurface our skin, make new skin cells, we can lift out pigment, we can lift out congestion, we can lift out sun damage, and it doesn't age us. It doesn't cause all of the sun inflammation that is so, you know, every time we go and get a peel or a zap or a retinol cream, we're creating a sun sensitivity. Like we're creating a net loss eventually because all of those things create more aging ultimately. Whereas if we get the right amount of dermal nutrient dose into our skin, our skin can resurface, clear itself, maintain balance, and then we can maintain dermal thickness and regain some dermal thickness too that we've lost through over procedureing and menopause. So well, it's really me, exciting. That brings me to another uh, thing that I've always noticed. I'm a big fan of people might find this odd, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a meditating yogi guy, but I'm a big fan of the UFC. And what's interesting is there's a big difference in the durability of skin types. So in other words, some athletes will cut uh, or swell very easily, which is a real tough thing if they're in a fight because their eyes might swell up or things like that, which doesn't allow them to continue. And then there's other people that can just get pummeled and their face and skin doesn't cut or break as easy. So is there particular aspects? Like, do you have to kind of see what type of skin you might have? The Bioptimizer mission is to help more of the world fix their digestion at a core level. The truth is your digestion is only as good as your enzyme levels. Imagine trying to build a house with a tree. It's impossible. You need to chop the tree down into small pieces. Similarly, in order for your food to be used by your body, it must be broken down into a bioavailable form. And that's what enzymes do, converting protein into amino acids, fats into specific fatty acids, and carbohydrates into usable energy units. We start out with an abundance of enzymes, and that's why kids can digest just about anything really quickly. The thing is, is cooking food kills enzymes as they cannot survive at temperatures above 118 degrees. So years of this ends up depleting our bodies and leads to weak digestion. Taking digestive enzymes like masszymes, which has an incredibly high level of protease for digesting protein, as well as other critical enzymes like lipase, amylase, and others is a total game changer. Suddenly you strengthen your digestion, eliminate gas and bloating, boost metabolism, and multiply your energy. Most importantly, you fix your digestion at a core level. To get started with Masszymes and to save 10% on your first order, go to Masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com and use the code MASS10, M-A-S-S-1-0. Well, we all have, we're all held handed a deck, right? When we're born. Yeah, that's what it's I mean. It's like so genetics, it's right? Yes. Yeah. And so we're never going to be able to escape our genetics. Of course, there's the field of epigenetics, which is fascinating. So um, cool. oh, I love that. But what we all skin craves dermal nutrients. Our skin is actually hungry. It's an organ that wants nutrients like the rest of our body. And so dermal nutrients and topical, you know, hydration and barrier restoration are all of the things that can strengthen what you got. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it can only help maintain and improve what you were given. So really though, that's, so would there be a, a few differences? Like for example, let's say you were coming in and doing a specific, um, 
consultation with somebody who's trying to figure out that, you know, they've been struggling with the skin problems for a lot of time, you're going to kind of go down, see what they've been doing. And then how does yeah, that I work? do the what, whole so, thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I can explain what that's like, because I think there's, there's a, a lot of people would like, you know, have skin issues. They don't know what to do. They're getting the run of the mill stuff from this person, that person, they're spending a ton of money, but they, they've maybe never been exposed to someone who's coming at this from you. What's it like if I'm like, you oh, know, my skin's a disaster, you know, Danny, help me. What am I going to do? Yeah. Okay. So I, we're touching on these, what I call the four pillars of skin health or the skin health. Where are they? Yeah. The skin rights, the bill of rights for skin. I've been, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And the first one is um, dermal nutrients. Like seriously, like all skin is hungry and it would be about me trying to find the right dose for that particular individual. And that has to do with a lot of different variables. And that's why I make three different serums and three different strengths to fit everybody's all the different appetites, if you will. So finding der the right amount of dermal nutrients, and that's a fundamental right. And then the second one is um, hydration, like water is universal. All skin craves and needs water. And that's, that's a thing that's quite easy to help, you know, with the right skincare products. It's like pretty much fixed overnight and then gets better as the weeks and the months go on. And then, um, the third is something called barrier restoration, and that's sort of a fancy way of saying using uh, an oil-rich moisturizer. Because of this big phobia about clogging our pores and this strategy of always trying to dry out acne or dry out congestion, that that acid mantle that we touched on earlier, which is this the mix of our own sweat and oil, that's what our acid mantle is, and it's invisible. You cannot right. see it. It's like it's it's like a very invisible thin thin residue that's on our skin film, and it's supporting that. It's it's adding oil to that from avocado. From I'm a big fan of shea and cocoa butter. All mm -hmm. I make multiple moisturizers, and they all have most of them have that base because it's just so dense. And that's what traps water in our skin because we can hydrate all we want, but if we're not using a moisturizer that has a lipid in it that creates a barrier so that that doesn't evaporate, it's all like lost, you know? And of course there's all these oil-free moisturizers, which, oh, that's the thing that I'm like, no, right. those just need to be taken. They, those need to be renamed something else like a serum, but they're not a moisturizer because you can't have hydrated skin and skip that step. So the third, um, the Bill of Rights, my third one is um, barrier restoration, which is using an oil, you, not being afraid of oils in your moisturizer and making friends with that little bit of residue. So many people have been brainwashed that if it's sticky or it leaves any kind of residue that it's dirty and it's gross and it's grimy and it's just not true. Like that little bit of residue is the difference between being a, a raisin or a grape. <laughs> and it's the difference of having pores that are functioning properly or not. Or And it's also the difference of your skin overproducing oil. A lot of skin that's dehydrated and doesn't have an acid mantle in place overproduces oil. Oh. So I have lots, I mean, a lot to say about that. But the fourth one, which is really interesting and something that I, it took me years to really understand all of the phases is this need of release. Our skin is truly a release organ. It's the largest and organ in the body. Yeah, it sure is. And it's so complicated on our face. I mean, the skin on our face has so many nerve endings and is different than any other skin anywhere on our body. Really? And so it why, goes, why is that? Why I don't that? know. I mean, why is the sky blue? I don't know. I mean, there's so many miracles in this world about why things are as beautiful and as amazing and as intricate as they are, right? I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm so know. excited to apply these things tomorrow and wake up even more beautiful <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> So, so this is oh but our faces they're extraordinary i mean they're yeah. just there's miracles everywhere we look right well, on, i look in, this in the world. mirror and i go well i don't know if it's extraordinary but certainly... <laughs> <laughs> so how do i get to extraordinary what are some best well i want to talk about this detox this release oh, okay. thing a little bit more because it's actually super fascinating 
our skin goes through a whole process and song and dance as it heals. And this is, I have several chapters in my book dedicated just to this process because what I discovered is when the skin has access to dermal nutrients, it has optimal hydration, it has barrier restoration in place, what happens is nothing short of a healing miracle. Our skin detoxes. And we can only detox and truly heal when it were our skin is in a stable place and it's getting these things day in and day out. It becomes healthy and stable enough to truly heal. And, and so it starts shuffling any of the congestion that's in our skin, blackheads, milia. I've typed like so many different types of milia. Milia is basically like a whitehead that never made it out. And so the right. skin just isolates and stores it as these little white things underneath the skin. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of different cl classifications of those because I've seen so many at this point. So what is so fascinating is as our skin heals, it there's a migration of this congestion towards the surface of the skin where it can be taken out, where there's final, there's freedom. And that's the process that I offer people is permanent because once we detox the skin, our skin, and the average is people usually need two to three sessions the first year in this process. And then I see people less than once a year because their skin has literally been detoxed. I've We've irrigated the what pores. Comes of, what comes out of your skin when it's detoxed? Blackheads and milia. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's what's coming out of your sim because some people don't understand what detox. No, detox it's like these sounds... little hard things that you feel. It'll feel like a grain of rice under the skin. Wow. Um, and people often think that they have cystic acne. Like this is this whole thing in in their cysts in there. And I have seen a few cysts, but m almost. 90, like 98% of the time, it's these little tiny hard milia. It's a, basically a whitehead that solidified. It's like a pus pocket that got hard and it his it, the skin will store it for years. I've had clients come to me and they're like, this is a mole. The dermatologist told me it was a mole and we discovered it was not a mole. It was a big fat milia in their skin that had permanently been stored there this, you know, for 10, 20 years once I have a, I had a client, we're off that, out that came. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so wow. it's really remarkable, this process that our skin goes through as it heals. And that's what's different about my method of what my method is. It's holistic resurfacing. Conventional resurfacing is just about beating the skin down. <laughs> giving it a ton of anxiety, over exercising it and basically wearing it out and constipating it all at the same time. Whereas my method goes in, it hydrates, we feed the skin for real, like beyond lip service. We give it actual nutrients that it can use immediately, restore the barrier and the skin completely changes in texture. Like it's really an amazing, beautiful, um, process. That's why I love what I do so much is because it's such a, it's, it can, it can be for people who have a lot of congestion in their skin, such a radical process and skin can just be turned around. Whereas, and you know, a lot of people have spent so much money on acne, so much money on sun damage and it's just not good where these people are ending so let's, up. <laughs> so let's walk us through a person. Okay. So maybe I'm, uh, let's say I'm a 40 year old woman. Let's pretend I'm a 40 okay. year old woman. I've been struggling with skin conditions. I got some, you know, blemishes coming out on my face, maybe some acne. I got stuff, yeah. maybe some scuffy marks on my regular body. And I'm like, Oh, you know, what do I, how do I correct this? Like, what would I do? I've tried everything. I've been to skin cares. I've been to taking medications. I've been scrubbing my skin. I've been putting creams on my skin. I've tried to go natural. I'm not right, you're results, just you're though. describing many of my clients because yeah. So what do I do? Something strange and different if they haven't already tried everything else. So well, I I get a lot of people like, oh my god. I mean, I'm so desperate. I'm even going to try this strange lady that's doing this like bizarre thing with skin. <laughs> so yeah. you've so actually what? described a lot of my clientele. So it's so basic. Um, there's a hydrating mist. I'm getting you on, I would get this woman on the right serum. There's three serums. 
Um, they're all hydrating, meeting exactly her appetite for her skin and a moisturizer. And so that would be morning and night. There would be a monthly exfoliation. I sell a monthly exfoliation pack, possibly a vitamin C powder to add fresh a few nights of week. I would also recommend minimal cleansing and also most very importantly is sending her to an internal functional medicine doctor because so much of what's happening on our skin is because of gut microbiome and hormones yes which are can be interrelated gut microbiome absolutely and absolutely and so what i find is if we can clear up everything on the inside and support the skin from the outside like that's when skin can transform so quickly and then how long would it take, let's say someone's in this situation, what is a reasonable amount of time to heal the skin in a, in a kind of a systematic way that you would go through? Well, I mean, it totally depends on how off-center, how unharmonized their skin is. Mm -hmm. I've had people do complete turnarounds in a few weeks. I mean, if they're coming to me in not so bad shape and even overnight, they're like, oh my God, my skin, if it's just thirsty and we fix the thirsty skin, like done, they're plumped up, you know, there's everything just starts working again. So I would say for somebody with like mediocre skin problems, like nothing really, nothing, you know, extraordinary, you know, a skin can turn around in like one to three months and look like completely different skin texture wise and and that's what i am i'm a texture expert so that's what i that's what i focus on is texture and health and that's what, the what thing what does texture mean what does texture mean texture is like that beautiful yummy thing that clear hydrated pores have like when you look at skin up close and you can see the pores and they're clear and they're open and there's not junk in there stuck it's it's that it's like when you look at a seven-year-old skin mm -hmm. right that's really healthy and you see that beautiful just that continuation oh, and the texture yeah, of healthy right. skin yeah i mean there's just like and butter. that's the thing that's not being addressed <laughs> right and that's the thing that's not being addressed in the skin industry conventionally it's all about like pumping it up synthetically it's all about like scraping at it and and believe you me like i've worked with skin in california since i moved here 12 years ago that has i mean some of these women have spent I have so much money on their skin. I mean, the confessions I've had of how much money they have spent at medi spas and dermatologists, and it's Botoxed, it's injected, it's been peeled. And when you really look at the skin close up, the skin is miserable. The texture is horrible. There's no glow. And it's really sad because, you know, these women have spent a lot of money. And, and when you get to the bottom of it and you really look at their skin up close in the magnifying lamp, that skin is like, it's, cry, it's making a sad song. I got a question for you because I noticed this, oh, uh, it was a number of years ago and it came out around the Kardashians as they kind of rose to fame. Okay. And, and it kind of went concordant with Facebook. And most of my guy friends noticed this, that, that there was this look that looked what I called it, the caked on clown look. <laughs> that, yeah. But like girls started to make their faces look like clowns. Like, and there was like all these layers and stuff. And it was like this really kind yeah, of artificial it's... thing that they were taking pictures for on Instagram. And mm -hmm. it's still trending, not maybe to the extent it was, but, and we used to all kind of wonder, we'd be like, whoa, well, what's going on here, right? And I understand there's so much pressure, but what what's what is going what on? Is there? That? What is that? Well, this is my assessment. Look? This is my assessment of it. I mean, beauty, right? <laughs> the beauty industry, and then a woman's beauty. It's our radiance. It's it's very personal, and it's very precious to each woman's heart. No matter how tough any woman tries to act, mm -hmm. like our beauty and our radiance is valuable and it's something that we want to keep and hold on to and i also think that it has to do with self-love and self-acceptance and we play that out in the theater of the beauty industry 
as like, am I lovable now? Am I acceptable now? Am I beautiful now? And it's, it's, I think karma that we women and, you know, men too, to a degree, we're working out, <laughs> you know, with, with self-love and self-acceptance and, and it just takes us down some strange path, some strange pathways, especially when we live in a society that, you know, there's so much pressure to be all of those things and to, you know, and, and there's, and I, it's changing now, but there's multiple ways that, I mean, my whole message is that like, there's a million ways to be beautiful. I mean, a million, and it's the diversity of women and, you know, humanity that makes us this beautiful. And so we were handed that deck of cards. We have to just have, we have one job, like be you. Like we just have to be ourselves. And then that intersects with all this pressure that we have, you know, about our worth and all of those things in society and our mortality, you know, aging is a very tricky topic. And I think that w w women and especially in California, we can just get in our little bubbles with the definitions of what that looks like. And um, ultimately, I, I think what I've learned for myself is that health and beauty are the same thing. Well, let me like if we're you, healthy, we're beautiful. I want to take an, uh, a little bit of a detour here into another area that I think we kind of touched on, but we never went into. And, and that is when you talked about kind of using both sides of the aisle like like so let's say okay there may be a point where someone says yes i need surgery or I need something like what procedures do you have from the medical side that you would say are acceptable under certain conditions and what yeah would yeah and i have a whole chapter in my book called the skin health bank and instead of saying like these procedures are bad and these procedures are good right. the idea is imagine that you have a bank account and you want to put deposits in when that's dermal nutrients hydration barrier restoration allowing your skin to release there's acupuncture there's a i've listed all of the things that are deposits and i've listed all of the things that are withdrawals and so i'm not a nazi about like you can never do this this is a hard and mm -hmm. fast rule it's more like how many deposits can we make <laughs> and then how can we carefully choose and more like garnish from the other side of the aisle like you say to enhance that taking everything into consideration and it's very unique for every woman depending on what their you know what they want to achieve for some women they don't really care about the spots on their skin for them it's just the volume in their skin and it could be totally different for another woman it's it's fascinating to me what each person will glob onto is the thing that must be fixed in order for them to have, you know, to feel like, to feel good about themselves. So that's more of my approach with, with that. And generally, would you, before someone was going to do uh, maybe surgery or something like that, or some kind of treatment, I don't even know all the treatments that they yeah. do, but um, would you kind of like prep them beforehand to kind of ideally? Them? Yeah. I mean, and I would, I mean, my big dream is to change the conventional, um, method to where we weren't treating teenagers from the get go and young skin from the get go to be dehydrated, to be starved, mm -hmm. to be congested. I want to flip that to where we're using a functional medicine model where skin is hydrated, it's dermally nourished, people know not to over scrub their skin, like all of this is intact, because then when we, first of all, we're going to have better skin. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> it's something that actually works. <laughs> and then two, when we do want to elect to do something as we age, um, we're coming into it in a better place we're not already in the red getting our third facelift or way in the red and we're going in and getting Botoxed every month, mm -hmm. you know, like, cause those are all like, you know, withdrawal, 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 and people are going into it with their skin compromised. So I would always, always advocate for people to have the healthiest skin possible. And that means these four pillars, hydration, dermal nutrients, barrier restoration, and creating a skin culture and a beauty culture where um, having a blemish now and again is okay. Like, 
you know, it, it like Not it's in that's dynamic. And if by suppressing one, by suppressing one milia or whitehead, you're creating a way bigger problem down the road. Like, it's just like, have the feelings, have the, have the thing. And, and so it's not biting you in the ass later, you know, and, and because there's so much pressure that skin has to be cardboard and it has to be pressed and it's this like object. And in reality, skin is this permeable, soft, beautiful, dynamic thing that um, is so exquisite when it's healthy. So Danny, um, maybe you can share with us uh, some where you can get the book, um, what's your, the, the name of the book, your social media and where they could reach for you for maybe a consultation or things like that. If someone wants to really kind of go all in, what would they, where would they go and what would they do? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, if people want to really nerd out, my book is amazing. It's 90 minutes. It's on YouTube. It's called relearning skincare story of skin in the new way. You mentioned it. Um, it's how I just came to everything. It's not a clinical studies book and it's not me being in a white lab coat, you know, being like this harsh dermatologist type of person. It's like the story. It's like how this all really came to be and everything that I saw and have seen over the years and what emerged. So that's on YouTube. Um, and I have a PDF if people go to my website, which is Skin Harmonics. And if they sign up for my newsletter, they'll get that PDF. And furthermore, just for your people, I have a special landing page, Skin Harmonics um, backslash podcast, and that will take them to a page where if they sign up for my newsletter, they'll also get a coupon. They'll get a PDF of the 10 things that their skin wishes they would stop doing. That's the, oh, I don't really, go. a good a... time putting that together and a, and a PDF for the book, or they can get on YouTube and listen to it. And then I'm on Instagram and on Facebook as Skin Harmonics. Well, there you have it. It's www.skinharmonics.com slash podcast. Make yeah. sure that you check out the book, get the PDF, the 10 things. What was that? The 10 things that your, that your skin just wishes you would stop doing. Like, please, <laughs> if your skin was given a microphone, like what it would just like stop. shout into the microphone to you to stop doing. And it's pretty awesome because I think the main thing is that people just need to know there's another way. Like people are just shelling out all this time and not getting anywhere in so many cases to this industry standard that in my estimation is a dinosaur. It's like on its way out and it, people just need to understand that there is another way. And um, if they go to Skin Harmonics, there's like a lot of information about it. And of course, all of my expertise is available. They can click a con like to get a free consult from me Th that can be scheduled from my website as well. Like break this. Um, we're hypnotized. The beauty industry has hypnotized us and it's not for our own good. I'm telling you. <laughs> and so we have to like kind of take that back and just know that like there's another way. Right on. So thank you, Danny Neifert, for such an interesting topic on skin. Please check out her book, Relearning Skin Care, The Story of Skin and the New Way. Of course, check out the links that we have in the social media. You want to download the PDF on the 10 things that your skin wish it could say to you to stop doing or however that was or whatever. But hey, this has been enlightening, I think. I'm all excited. I'm going to go up to my skincare cupboard and look to see if I'm violating any of these things that I learned about <laughs> today. So um, thank you so much for joining us. And for our listeners, I want to thank all of you for joining this podcast. If you liked it, smash the like button. If you hated it, make sure you put a comment in either or. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have an awesome day. And by Optimizers, our mission is to fix digestion. And a cornerstone of digestion is gut flora. P3OM is our patented probiotic formula. In fact, we call it the Navy SEALs of probiotics. You see, strong proteolytic or protein digesting activity is paramount to having a healthy gut flora. And of course, P3OM provides that. The good news is, unlike weaker probiotics, P3OM survives the digestion process. What it does is it basically multiplies the good guys while protecting you against pathogens or what some people call the bad guys. 
P3OM really helps to rebuild your digestion. And what that allows you to do is to maximize nutrient uptake, energy, and metabolism. To find out more of how P3OM can help you, go to www.bioptimizers.com. Thank you for listening to the Bioptimizers Awesome Health Podcast. You can find more information at bioptimizers.com.